This presentation is entitled Personnel Management. In this presentation, we demonstrate divine inspirations, powerful and revolutionary TCSQL technology in support of a skills database. In this presentation, you'll see use of very powerful inference queries in order to determine finding the right person for the right job. Personnel Management. The application mentioned on the previous slide is founded by a powerful technology called TCSQL, which features the ability to maintain graphs, particularly with a powerful capability called transitive closure, features the notion of something called a soft schema. We're going to start by doing a little graph theory here. In front of us are two graphs, a family tree and a graph of bus routes. Some of the components of a graph consist of the following, the notion of something called nodes. In this family tree graph, the nodes happen to be the names of people here. A second component of graphs are these things called connections here, or edges. And they happen to be the arrows we see between nodes here. Sometimes in graphs, you have a semantic relationship associated with these arrows. In this family tree graph, we have a father of relationship, and we have a mother of relationship. Sometimes with graphs, you have scalar values associated with the connections. In this bus routes example, the scalar value represents a cost of going from one city to another. The object-oriented paradigm can be represented as a graph problem. So here we have a class here called class one, which has properties A, B, and C, and it has a relationship between the class definition and its associated properties. We also ha have another class here called class 1.1 with properties D and E. And we see a relationship here between these two nodes and is a relationship, meaning that class 1.1 is a specialization of class one. Now let's look at a graph here. Let's look at what happens if we want to instantiate class 1.1. Let's look at the equivalent object graph. In this case, it would look like the following. Assuming we want to instantiate class 1.1 and we're going to call that object, object 1, what happens is the following. We first want to instantiate properties D and E, and then we want to look at this inheritance is a link here to inherit properties A, B, and C, which is what you see down here. Okay, now let's look at the relational tables needed to support this paradigm here. So we have the notion of a class table here, which represents the nodes of our class graph here. It's basically a name value pair here, and we have a type column here, and legal type values. This represents basic uh, class types here. We have a class connection table of parent-child nodes here, and a connection type here. In this case, it's going to be either HASA or ISA. And then we have a transitive closure table representing the transitive closure of this class graph. And assume for a minute that this transitive closure table is automatically populated and managed whenever nodes or connections are added or deleted in this class graph. Let's look at the tables needed to support our object graph here. We have a table called object, which represents the nodes of our object graph here. Again, it is basically a name value pair with a class column here represent, representing the kind of um, class that we're instantiating here, including the class properties. We also have an object connection table here, which represents the connections of our object graph. So it's a parent-child pair, again, with connection type. And we have a transitive closure table associated with our object graph. And assume here also that this transitive closure table is maintained automatically whenever nodes or connections are added or deleted in our object graph here. So this whole paradigm here I'm describing here with these six relational database tables is something known as a soft schema. With this soft scheme model, Let's look at an example of instantiating a class instance here. So we have a class graph here, and all the data in this graph can be represented with two tables here. So we have a class table representing all of the nodes of this graph. 
we have a class connection table showing all of the connections here. Now I didn't bother showing all of them. I just showed a, a, a number of a few of the rows here. Okay, now let's look at what happens when we want to instantiate this particular node here, uh, a boy. What we're going to do is instantiate this boy. We're going to call this instantiation Andy here. And what is going to happen behind the scenes is TCSQL is going to figure out all of the particular properties um, that need to be inherited here and it will populate appropriate object and object connection tables here. And these two tables will represent an object graph that looks like the following here. Notice here that I've introduced a new kind of relationship, it, a has not a relationship. TCSQL supports the ability to do inheritance override here. Now, if you were to implement this in an object-oriented language such as C Sharp or Java, this is the object graph equi equivalent of what you would get here. Now, the real power and beauty here is I did this directly in a relational database using standard SQL. The use of TCSQL provides the ability to develop rather sophisticated applications. For the application featured in this presentation, we're going to use a schema consisting of the following. A couple of conventional relational tables here, one for time card records and one for personnel records. And we'll use the notion of a soft schema to represent the data in graphs. Let's look at a conventional approach to doing personnel management. In particular, let's look at an application that deals with a skills database. So imagine for a minute the following. Let's assume that your company developed a project tracking system. And the project tracking system is broken down into a number of subcomponent components. And you've had a number of different people work on different subcomponents here. Well, one of the things you want to do in, in a skills database is you want to find the right people for the right job. You want to be able to ask questions. So here we have this database table of skills. And so one of the things you might want to ask is you might want to find someone in your company that has tracking tool experience. So you can imagine doing, writing a select statement here that looks in the skills column for tracking. Another kind of question, you might want to find someone that has C experience or Java experience or something like that, or SQL experience. Now notice C and SQL don't show up here in the skills column, and so we would not be able to find anyone in the company that has uh, this experience. Ingress, it's a type of relational database, doesn't show up. Let's ask a higher level question. Can we find anyone that has database experience in general? Well, we would have to find the word database that shows up in the skills column. It doesn't show up. Same thing with project management tool experience in general. Doesn't show up here. Let's look at another approach to developing a personnel management system here. One that uses what I'll call an ontology approach here. So here's our system here, this tracking system. Imagine taking it and overlaying it with this knowledge layer. Basically, you're overlaying it with an ontology here. So we see this tracking system consists of Ingress uh, database code and SQL code and C code here. So you get the general idea. Now imagine the following. Let's say we have two candidates for a potential job. Someone that worked on this tracking system for four years. Someone that worked on this report subsystem for six years. And imagine the following. You want to ask the following question. Which of these two candidates is better suited for doing C programming? Okay, so if you look at this, well, the obvious answer is uh, the tracking person. Why? Because we see from this ontology overlay that this tracking subs subsystem, in fact, utilized C code. Okay, let's look at another scenario. Same two candidates here. And let's find out which is the better candidate for a task involving writing SQL code here. Now here we see both the tracking subsystem and the report subsystem both utilized SQL code. So in this case we end up probably taking the reports person because they have six years experience of SQL code versus, versus four years experience of the tracking person. Let's look at another scenario same two candidates, only this time they're vying for a job of writing Pascal code here. Now in the other 
two scenarios these candidates were looking for a particular task there was a directed path from either tracking or reports to the particular task at hand in this case though we're looking for pascal experience and if you follow the arrows the tracking su subsystem and the report subsystem do not have a directed path leading to pascal now if you think about this logically though you know as a programmer both pascal and c are kind of similar they're both special cases of this more general category of procedural programming languages. And so you know logically in your head, if you have any programming experience, that the tracking person is probably the person you want here. Now let's think of it, what you did here from a graph perspective. You were trying to find a direct match of Pascal. What you ended up doing is relaxing your, your requirement here and abstracting one level of abstraction. So you're basically inferring that if this person has C experience, they probably can do Pascal code. So let's look at some SQL code that does that knowledge inference we just talked about in the last slide here. So here we have a select statement from our skills table here. And we're using a, ta a view actually called desired skill. I'm not going to bother showing the definition of, the, of this view. Suffice it to say that it uses transitive closure. So in this particular example, we're trying to find a person that has both Java and Oracle experience, and we're willing to abstract one level ab abstraction in finding the right candidate here. And so in executing this particular select statement, let's assume we have the following table here. So we see this person named Paul here who has Java experience, and so we didn't have to abstract at all, so he gets credit for that. We also see that the same person has C++ experience. And so although the desired skill is Java, we had to abstract one level uh, of abstraction for that skill. So we get partial credit for that. So you can see uh, that it is possible to do some very sophisticated querying here. This type of query I refer to as an inference query. So let's summarize what we've seen here. We've demonstrated an ability to use ontologies to categorize skills and experience. And we've also demonstrated the ability to execute very powerful inference queries.